Uh, good evening. I'd like to go ahead and call this meeting to order at uh, 706 p.m. on October 12th. Uh, for all those who can, please rise and the pledge of allegiance. I have a I'd like to lead you to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Identify yourself by name, address, or the company institution you represent. The public address of the board segment will last no longer than 30 minutes. Please make your comments concise and try not to repeat statements made by others. Please address your comments to the board chair. Discussion or debate on any issue may not take place at this time. The chair or designee may answer questions on procedural matters. Please be cordial and respectful of others. If anyone wishes to be recognized when the board discusses an agenda item, Please make that request at this time. The board chair may grant this request. Address comments to the board chair and be concise. Seeing none. Okay, we move to number six for the committee appointment rat ratifications. Mr. Atkinson. I am very pleased to present uh, Dalton Water and Fire District's new fire chief. James Peltier, if you would like to come forward and say hello and uh, get on camera here so people get to know your mask. Yes, I think you guys should take that off if you want and address the board. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Uh, Jim Peltier. Congratulations. Uh, met a few of you already, yeah. but uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, what do you need? <laughs> Well, uh, thank you for choosing Dalton, that's one thing. And, thank you for uh, choosing me. It was, yeah. it was, it's a great, great little town. Yeah. I, had, I had the pleasure of sending an email saying we should have a meet and greet, and the next morning I had a call and the chief showed up at my house and we had a little electrical smoke coming out of my basement. So We had a great time. Great time. <laughs> great time. <laughs> yeah, so. Didn't put a hole in your roof or anything. Not so. at all. Not at all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So any questions from the board at all? I got one. Chief, just if you could just uh, clarify, why are cops better than firemen? <laughs> well, it's actually not true, but I can't get into it now. It's, uh, we can we can YouTube it later. All right, thank you. So, who officially won the uh, the cornhole tournament? Yeah, uh, we let the police win. They did. That's uh, right. Being new in town, I didn't want to. <laughs> <that now>. so <laughs> we're, we're thinking of a few other things that we can be in that next time. So. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. So, I, I would like uh, also just to mention that uh, traditionally the chief has. Um, been appointed as the town's forest warden, a member of the Emergency Management Advisory Council, and a member of the Traffic Commission. Um, the uh, membership on the Emergency Management Advisory Council and Traffic Commission, um, I, uh, well, I, I'll, just, uh, I'll just stop there and say those uh, three positions are ones that the fire chief has traditionally been appointed to. And I would urge uh, that you be the appointment, or that you ratify my appointment. Quick, I have a motion. Those positions. So moved. So a second. Motion and second. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you, Chief. Looking forward to work with you. Anything we can do to support you, just let us know. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, Open Space and Recreation Committee. Uh, I'm very pleased to have uh, the names of seven individuals. Um, I, I hope you can include two more than are listed on the agenda. We got late 
um, uh, affirmations by a couple of them, uh, Jared Shannon and Glenn Lagerwald, that they would also like to be uh, members of the committee. Uh, they've all received the charge of the Open Space Committee and agreed um, to work under that charge. Uh, we do have Taylor Staubach with us um, as, as a representative of the Open Space and Recreation <laughs> Committee. Um, clearly uh, a motivated uh, and committed member to, to come out tonight. Uh, unfortunately, uh, for various reasons, uh, we uh, were unable to get the others to attend this meeting. That's perfectly good. Uh, unless, there's, unless Galaxy A01 in our Zoom, uh, that could be uh, a member of the... Cheryl Rose. Is that Cheryl Rose? Uh, if so, you're muted. And you could unmute and, and say hello. Uh, yes, I believe Cheryl was planning to attend by Zoom, uh, but may not. I, you know, I can't hear, so oh. if I'm being asked to say something, I can't tell. <laughs> I heard my name. We, we just heard, um, we just had some of the audio. So that's great. Even though the Zoom is muted, um, we, we do have audio. Can you hear us now, Sean? Okay. I mean, I could hear you, but it's so distant and muffled, and I'm, I'm actually driving in the car because we're coming back from canoeing and I don't know where to wait because I love the outdoors. <laughs> um, so, am I supposed to say something? Is that? Uh, no, just, um, just uh, it, thank you for, for coming and uh, demonstrating your your uh, commitment to the committee. This is the beginning of, of the new committee, which will implement the open space and recreation plan that the town worked so hard on for so many years. And uh, I'm extremely pleased to get this uh, finally up and, up and going. And they'll be working on prioritizing the action steps in the open space and recreation plan and uh, deciding what is a uh, priority for the town of Dalton to work on first and then checking things off the list and maybe coming up with more ideas and uh, open space to be preserved and conserved and uh, ideas for recreation as well. Fantastic. Fantastic. Tom, do we have a start date and a uh, like a length of service, like three years? Or? Uh, I believe that since this is a standing committee, these will be three-year terms. Okay. Um, it is true that we should stagger them. Uh, I would suggest then um, that the uh, first two on the list be appointed for three years, the second two for two years, and the third two for one year, and we will reappoint them um, as First two for three years, second two for two, and then we have three left for one? Uh, three left for one year, I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I mean, the dog may have to get renewed. Yeah. Um, well, when's the start date? Tonight. The start date tonight? 10 12. Um, yes, why don't we make it for, um, for Monday so we can get the, uh, the letters out and they can get sworn in? Okay, so that'll be the 18. So it'll be the uh, 16. 16, okay. Okay, with that, I have a motion. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I can make it. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, the 18. 18, okay. 18. Oh, that was right. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to point to the new Open Space Recreation Committee for a term of three years, Taylor Starbuck and Art Saunders. For two years, Cheryl Rose and Eric Payson. For one year, Dan Esco, Glenn Lapwell, and Jared Shannon. Is there a second? Second. Motion, second, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Thank you, everybody. Thank yes. you, Cheryl. Thank you. Taylor, and um, we're really looking forward to the great work of this committee. It's tied to so many great opportunities for the town. And uh, thank you, Mr. Archer, for your leadership for bringing that committee together. Looking forward to it. So thank you. I'd like to recognize Dan Filio. Thank you. Uh, too. Oh, absolutely. 
Absolutely. Mr. Filler did a lot of coordination, a lot of hard work behind the scenes and getting the open space planned together. And, and he, um, he interviewed a lot of these people for this committee. Yeah, awesome. And then that unlocks some just straight state grants as we go along, right? The open space plan? Yes. Okay. Um, that's Mr. Hutchinson, the Beautification Commission. Yes, I'm also uh, very pleased uh, to present Judy Harris and Deborah Wary, uh, who are here with us tonight. Um, uh, Bob Mary, I believe, is the chair of the Beautification Commission, and uh, it is on his recommendation um, that I would uh, appoint and have you ratify the appointment of Judy Harris and Deborah Wary. Also for three years, Tom. Uh, yes, for three years. And starting Monday? Yes. Sorry. Thank you for your indulgence on that. Okay, I make a motion to appoint Judy Harris and Deborah Wary to the Beautiful Cation Commission starting 10 18 21 for a period of three years. Is there a second? Motion, second, any discussion? Yes. I just want to say real quick. The Beautification Commission is the ad, one of my absolute most favorite things in this town. The hard work that goes out there and seeing the people out there working on the plants and the flowers, and everybody raves about it. Absolutely love it. It's a great thing. I, I can't say enough good things about it. Yeah, I echo those comments. And like today, I came out of uh, Orchard Road, and there was a bunch of us right there working on that little <laughs> little piece of uh, circle there. You guys do a great job. And, and it's really, it's nice to hear all kinds of compliments. It's nice to see it. So thank you so much for your service. Well, thank you so much for the kind of words. It uh, means a lot to everybody. Uh, I understand you had a little problem with people throwing some plants in the river on you a couple times. Yes, uh, over the summer, we, we had to take the brief baskets down early because uh, uh, the, we think some youth were there holding plants and throwing them. And plus, we had a couple of people drive through the car. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yes. That's a given. Uh, so, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you all. Thank Appreciate you. it. And uh, I have a motion to open as a sewer commission. So moved. Second. second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Uh, okay, we're going to consider a request for abatement. There's a memo in the packet from Mr. Hutchinson. Uh, this is Heather, Dur Heather Durant, clerk, assessor. Yes, uh, I'd like to ask if Dean Burris is on the Zoom call. If so, could you please unmute and introduce yourself? We have um, someone identified only as Galaxy A1, uh, Galaxy A01 on the Zoom screen who's muted. Um, we do not seem to have Dean Burris present. Uh, as I understand it, uh, the owner of the property uh, is the owner since May of 2021. And apparently over the winter, um, a pipe burst due to freezing. Uh, and it, I don't understand how the property could have been transferred with that condition without an inspector uh, noticing it. The, uh, the request is to abate the sewer rate because the house has been uninhabited um, and though there has been a water leak, uh, it uh, has not gone into the sewer, but ran out of the house. Um, that's all I can report. It does not come with a recommendation uh, from the assessors who typically
typically don't make such recommendations, but simply present the facts. Those are the facts as I understand them, and according to the policies and uh, procedures for sewer use fees and abatements, uh, uh, under number six for the reason for issuing abatements, um, there can be any other requests not covered by number five. Um, and I don't believe there are any of the regular reasons that are covered. Normally, uh, it takes a disconnection for at least one year or a dwelling which is occupied for greater than six months. Uh, and since uh, the property was transferred only in May, uh, that six months is not up. Uh, so the current fees would not be abated, but future fees could be abated. Um, without the applicant here, I can't make any further representations other than the documentation that we've all already received. Second the table this item. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Extension? Motion carried. Motion to close of the Sewer Commission. Second. Your second. Motion to second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Extension? Motion carries. Thank you. So the next one is the Mass DOT update. So this is a report out uh, by myself and the town manager regarding the meeting we had today um, with the Mass DOT and Chief Strout was also uh, in attendance. And this is related to um, our position on the roundabout. And DOT asked us to um, meet through a, a Zoom meeting today. And, and uh, gosh, that would be about know, eight or nine representatives from Mass DOT. And we had a lively conversation uh, about the roundabout. And, um, uh, Mr. Hutchinson, I'll pause and let, let you kind of make your comments and I'll read the summary I kind of drafted or should I just read that summary of the meeting? I, I think reading the summary is the, the best thing to do. Okay. So after the meeting, um, and really what the purpose of the meeting was is for Mass DOT to um, present us with additional thoughts and opinions and additional information about roundabouts. Um, the information wasn't really um, net new. So here is the, uh, the summary of the meeting that I drafted and uh, sent it back to the DOT representatives. Uh, Mass DOT shared general safety information about roundabout designs. The information was not much different than what was presented in March of 21. Uh, Chief Strout shared that questions previously asked remain unanswered. In addition, uh, the chief shared her concerns about South Street traffic trying to enter the roundabout during peak times. Um, I shared that the board voted against the roundabout, which is a position for Dalton, and that position will not change. A decision reached based on March 21st presentation, March 21 presentation. The Mass DOT website detail and feedback from the community, community listening session and comments from the public, letters and emails. Um, Mass DOT decided they will continue with the intersection evaluation. It is very unclear if Mass DOT will even offer the single and upgrade uh, option. Mass DOT has already communicated with the town of Dalton that a roundabout and alternate signal and upgrade for the intersection were options. Town of Dalton voiced concern that signal and upgrade is not a true option as presented by Mass DOT that would be concerned for our residents. Um, one of the Mass DOT representatives would meet with myself and Chief Strout to observe the intersection at Main and South Street. This will occur within the next two months. And per Marie Rose from Mass DOT, the project is on a pause pending further analysis. In conclusion, uh, I remain concerned that Mass DOT is not listening to the feedback from the town of Dalton and our residents. Many have invested time reviewing the presentations from Mass DOT, reviewed the project proposal on the website, and participated in community listening sessions, which included Mass DOT representatives. Based on Mass DOT's leaders' comments at the listening session, when asked if Mass DOT would change course of the 25% design from a roundabout to the signaling alternative. The answer was more likely than more likely no. 
This response was very telling and suggests to myself and residents that Mass DOT has already made a decision. Out of all the issues our small town has addressed over the last couple of years, the roundabout is one in which I hear about constantly and the feedback is the same. The roundabout is not the right solution for Dalton. So really in summary for the audience here and for folks listening at home is that Mass DOT is going to continue their evaluation, continue to look at a roundabout solution, but continue with the conversations. Um, we made the position of the town of Dalton very clear today yeah. and, um, and we'll continue having those conversations and keep everyone updated as we move forward. Any questions from the board? I don't have any uh, questions, but I think it's important, and, and this is for me personally, and I'm not speaking on behalf of the, the board, that I think it, we've gotten to a point where I, we need residents to start making some phone calls. And I'll work through my my channels to get the numbers out there and let the uh, residents that don't have their voices heard. Because, uh, obviously, they're not listening to us from what I'm hearing. So. I'll get the numbers out to everybody. We can start making phone calls and we'll let the homes loose and let them make some phone calls. Any other comments from the board? I say we don't change our way. I mean, the town people spoke and I think we should honor that. Should we reconfirm that this evening with another vote or just let's I think we, we already did it though. I don't think we need to. I agree. Okay. Um, yeah, so the conversation continues, but the town position is pretty clear. So with that, Ms. Hutchinson, any other comments? Any other comments? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, all right, moving on to the Board of Health update. James. I believe Jane Smith is on the Zoom now. And Jane, we are at the Board of Health update. So if you can unmute. Uh, we can hear your update. Now some people reported trouble hearing. This is a much different keyboard than on my Mac. discussion. I didn't write this policy, but I was on the board and I agreed to it. 
and the thought behind the policy is every year we had continual bickering about what night to have trick or treat on. And finally, the chairman, Mary Cherry, says, we're going to vote and have a designated nine for trick or treating, 537 on uh, October 31st every year in perpetuity. Now, exactly how this word non sanctioned got in there, or sanctioned or non sanctioned, I have no idea. I mean, in reality, there is no such thing as sanctioned or non sanctioned. Trick or treating is a neighborhood activity. And it's not, you know, maybe it's a poor attempt to uh, avoid liability by saying it's not sanctioned. But I didn't agree with it then. I don't agree with that wording now. I mean, I think it should be stricken. You just say trick or treating is such a, we prefer to have trick or treating on such and such a night, October 31st from 530 to 7. I think that's my point exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what you're saying. I think if we take out the non-sanctioned part yeah. and it's a town event, and that way we can, if we had to, if we had to last year, we canceled it. I just say we keep it in there as a town event, and I do agree we'll just keep it on October 31st from 537, just right. leave it at that, but yeah. I think we should drop something in the future just so it's a, it's a sanctioned event, and just, or, you don't even have to say anything. No, exactly right, Mark, I agree with you completely. How did it ever get in? Way back, years ago, there was an incident where somebody contaminated a treat and gave it to a trick-or-treater. And uh, fortunately, the child wasn't injured, but it led the uh, good folk, town leaders, to ban trick-or-treating. Uh, one thing too, John, yeah. we, uh, a couple years ago, we had to cancel it, and then we did another day. And on top of that, everybody and their brother went crazy because there was a big soccer tournament. Yeah. Well, yeah. I totally agree with keeping it just on October thirty first, five thirty seven, and I agree with striking out that non sanction. Bob, that's exactly the kind of issues that came up every year when, they, when the board continually argued over. There's a big soccer game tonight. There's a big football game tonight. Yeah, it's a prom night. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, Ridiculous. Yeah, I gotta go. I gotta go to the to a parade. There's right. another one. The Red Sox are in the World Series. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, that, that's a reason for change. I completely I agree with striking that word sanctions. So it's a good thing to revise policies every few years, and this was done in 2010. So you have a motion to make a correction or an update to the policy, and then we can update the policy tonight. I make a motion we update the trick or treat policy to strike the non sanction and keep it at October 31st from 5 p.m. 5:30 p.m. to 7 p.m. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Abstentions? Hearing none. Motion carries. Okay. Let me wait. I'm going to put plan on it now. Yes. There. So uh, town manager updates. Uh, we do have um, Jane Smith on now from the Board of Health. Okay. Hey, Jane. Can you hear okay. us? Hi, Jane. Uh, yeah, actually, I can hear you really well. Thank you for asking. Okay. We have the new speaker. It's working very well. Oh, good, good. Um, so, are we talking about Halloween or Board of Health update, or we just said the Halloween policy? So, we just updated to take uh, this word "sanctioned" out of it. Just keep it a town policy of October thirty first, five thirty to seven. So, perfect. So, we'll see. yeah, and it's it's about people just asking and calling. I'm sure Tom, Tom, and Alyssa will attest. You know, just knowing uh, what directions they're going is helpful for people. Oh, great. Am I supposed to be giving my update? Is that, I, I'm sorry, I haven't been following the agenda. I've been multitasking. Yeah, you're on stage, go right ahead. Okay, um, so um, I had sent out, my, uh, I had done a, a run of the numbers for um, cases in Dalton and actually, so we had, we had had a big peak and we we're finally through that peak and um, are actually doing pretty well right now. Our, average for the last or not our average but for the last 14 days um, we're at 10 cases for 14 days which is a great improvement over a couple weeks ago when we were um, up over 30 and you know we've only had eight cases in the last seven days so um, the, the caseload is going down we continue to work with the school district um, like for instance if there's a case you know we'll do some follow-up with the public health nurses to kind of try to um, 
drill down to see um, where that case came from. So um, it feels like things are going going in the right direction. You know, this time last year was the, was when we saw a spike of cases. So I just want to encourage people um, for the holiday season. So that's everything from Halloween, right? Then we have Thanksgiving, and then we have winter holidays. Is just if you're not with immediate family, you know, you're indoors with a lot of people. Just wear your face covering, just as a protective measure. Um, maybe not have such big gatherings indoors because that's how it's really. We know that that's how it's spread. Um, um, as far as is there any questions about COVID from the board? You no, know, it's good to see that there's not a lot of cases in that school age population in those numbers. Hmm. So that's that's promising. Yes. Yep. Um, the, the second thing that we've been working on is just um, we've been getting through quite a bit of housing in the Board of Health. Um, and you, we can ex if you go on to our agendas, you'll see that um, there'll be one or two things on the agenda every week as we just try to make our way through that. And we um, just want to ask people to we are working through a backlog that happened during COVID. And um, you know, we appreciate people's ongoing patience. I know that some people have been waiting for a while. We are getting through the cases and we're just trying to prioritize human health um, and then and then all the way down to nuisance um, level type things would happen, obviously. So we're uh, later. So we're just trying to triage it to make sure that people's health is being prioritized. And that's really all I have for you all. Any questions from the board? Yeah, I have one question. Jane, I was contacted by one of the water commissioners today and they wanted to know if we we're going to have light up the holidays this year. And I was wondering if you would check with your board and see what they have, have a feel at this point for. Um, I will. I will put that on the agenda for the November 11th or November 1st meeting. Yeah, and then we can we can get some feedback there. I but I, I will tell you that this board of health typically is taking a hands off approach. You know, we've all really worked hard to get um, our level of vaccination up. And so now we're just trying to mitigate the risk of getting back kind of to normal activities. And so, um, so uh, you know, I've never actually been at the light up the holidays event, but if it's mostly outdoors, um, I really don't foresee the Board of Health really um, saying much about it. I know that the businesses in Dalton, the CRA, have done an amazing job of just identifying where there might be a risk and, and adapting. So I have full confidence in um, the, any Dalton committee that's working on it, that they'll do you know what's right for the people of Dalton. So, so, the, so the recommendation could be, as we kind of step through this, is based on each location, use the COVID protocols. Uh, like CRA, there would be like a ballet show, it would be like pretty crowded and they see in the ballet show and things of that nature, but just kind of putting the protocols in place based on what the numbers are telling us and everything else at that time, right? Yeah, That's something we want because to people want to um and i think driving it also is that um sorry my internet's unstable so i'm going to stop the video so you can hear me better um so um there are some really good guidelines and also you know i find that both um for big events like that or even stores that they they just want their people their customer base to feel comfortable and so I, I find that there's just a lot of self-policing going on. Policing is not even the word necessarily, but um, you know, because everyone wants wants people to feel comfortable and feel safe um, as they're kind of dipping back into normal behavior. All right, thank you. Thank you, Jane. Any other questions from the board? Hearing none. Thank you, Jane, for that update. Very, very much appreciated as always. And uh, thank you for the great work you and the team continue to do for the town. My pleasure. Thank you. With that, we'll move to the town manager update. Thank you. The big news of the day is that the new Wakona Regional High School is up and running. Opening day was today. Any items not yet completed will be done off hours or weekends for the convenience of the staff and students. Uh, the Berkshire managers at their monthly meeting decided to put out a message supporting the study State Auditor Suzanne Bump published regarding the need for more infrastructure funds in Western Massachusetts. If you haven't had a chance to look at that, I uh, 
I recommend it. Two tax cases being challenged at the appellate tax board level uh, were withdrawn thanks to settlements negotiated by our assessors, particularly our contractor, RRG. Now, speaking of RRG, I am prepared to go out to bid for a three-year assessing contract. RRG's experience has been invaluable and frees our staff to do more work directly with residents, and I expect them to bid on the request for proposals. I am researching with the communications director the possibility of moving our backup call provider to the Berkshire Sheriff's Office. Using Pittsfield saves some money, but their service has not been what we would like and could result in unfortunate delays. The closing for 16 Gulf Road has once again been delayed. I'll be on a call with our treasurer on Thursday to see what we can do to help sort out the property, deed, and title issues. I'm also I, uh, I'm working with town council on the lease for the bank. I had thought that the article passed at the special town meeting in June for the town hall renovation was sufficient to cover a possible lease as the motion referred to temporary office space as one purpose of the article but we may need another special town meeting as it may be that the particular lease proposed has to be voted on by a town meeting. More to come. <laughs> the personnel study is progressing. Almost all the staff have filled out an extensive questionnaire regarding their positions. The consultant is seeking wage and salary information from comparable towns and will soon move to interviews with selected staff, including all department heads. And finally, I put, put the fi finishing touches on the contract for the Walker Brook preliminary engineering study and expect it to be signed by GZA Geoengineering within a week. Thank you, Tom. Any questions? Here and on uh, future agenda items. Light up the holidays. Light up the holidays. Anything else? Uh, I'll have a report out of the um, CBRSD Seven Town Advisory Board that's meeting this week. Anything else with future agendas? Okay, hearing none. Um, any items not anticipated 48 hours before the meeting? Nothing? Uh, remarks of the select board. I have one. Good. I'd like to shout out to the CRA for this. Uh, they had a big huge soccer tournament this weekend. And it was all over town. It was really well run. Uh, everybody seemed to have a great time. I mean, the kids, it was, I don't know if anybody's seen it or not, but every, there was, like Nessicus had four or five fields, Wakona had three fields, and you know it was just a great thing for the town to see that come back. You know, one step closer to getting back to normal. And everybody had a good time. I mean, it was just fantastically run, and I can't shout out enough to them. I saw a lot of good traffic coming through. I was at Juice and Java from the oh, crazy yeah. families <laughs> and the yeah. soccer team, so it's also good for business locally too. That's awesome. Any other remarks, Bob or John? I have one, it kind of goes to um, the announcement of the opening of the new high school. Um, if you follow 12th Man on Facebook or other social media, there is a game on October 22nd, and from 5 o'clock to 6.45 p.m. there's going to be an event. Will it be toys of the high school? There's going to be some music on the patio, some um, raffle tickets. Uh, Warrior t-shirt seals, benefit and Dana-Farber Cancer Center, uh, food, clothing, face painting, and a lot of other fun activities, and they call it the Route 9 Rumble. So again, that's on October 22nd, starting at 5 o'clock till 6.45, and game time's at 7. But if you haven't had a chance to tour the, tour the high school yet, absolutely amazing. Beautiful school. Well done. Um, with that, I think that's all I had. Anything else? Move on the table one more time? Nope. Okay. Moves us to announcements. 
Um, Pittsfield Dalton Household Hazardous Waste Day is Saturday, October 23rd um, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Visit the town <coughs> website to register for this event. Uh, next to the town is looking for residents interested in working on ecological issues to the Green Committee. Please contact Melissa, I always pronounce your last name incorrectly. Machino. Machino, thank you. At the town manager's office, 684-6111, extension 11, if you're interested. <coughs> and our next meeting is scheduled for Monday, October 25th, 2021. And with that, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions? Hearing none. Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Good night, Dalton. Thank you. Go Red Sox. Go Red Sox. <laughs> <laughs>